Come on, continue to lift your hands in his presence through Bandiki. Father, we thank you for your glory, for your power, God, that's already in the room, God. We thank you for the wave of your presence, God. Father, that's already here. God, you're already healing. God, you're already bringing deliverance. God, you're already meeting needs, God. In this place, God, today, come on, whatever you need today, come on, just begin to lift your hands in faith and begin to receive it. Whatever the need is today, it's happening in the presence of the King. Come on, open your mouth. Your mouth and begin to wash. Things happen when you begin to worship Him. Things happen when you begin to praise. Come on, I don't hear no worshipers in here. And this is the hour. God said, but the true worship. So worship the Father. In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Come on, with your hands lifted. Father, we bless you today, oh God. For God, even as you have spoken to me, oh God. And God, that you will speak through me, God, today. Father, to your people, God. And Father, I declare, oh God, that Jesus Christ is Lord in this place. Father, meet this mantle, God. Every work of the enemy now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for victory, God. We thank you for healing, God. We thank you for deliverance, God. We thank you for the shaking, God, that's happening in the realm of the spirit now. We give you praise. The spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, if you would open your mouth and begin to worship. If you would open your mouth and begin to kata and begin to give him glory. Watch God turn some stuff around, Rabba, in your life. I hear, oh God, I feel the presence of the king in here. I feel the king of glory in here. While some of you standing up watching me, your breakthrough is in your praise. If you can get a praise in your belly, if you can get a praise in your heart, watch God shift some in your life. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Yes, sir. Hey, Baba, Shurabas. Oh, I feel God in here. My respects, yeah, Baba, yeah. to my pastor yeah. and lady knows. Come on, clap your hands for the yeah. Hi, yeah, Baba, yeah. for the leaders of this house. To Pastor Russell and his wife in his absence. To Pastor LG and his wife and every leader and minister in your respective places. We thank God for you being in this place today. You've got to understand that the, the Bible declares that, that we must enter his gates with thanksgiving and if there's courts with praise, I shouldn't have to pump you up to bless the God that's been good to you. Yes, all of us, we worship and we praise differently, but there should be a praise, oh God, a praise on the inside. Father, we bless you. <laughs> Uh, some of your faces t hey, tell a story uh, yeah. uh, you can be seated in the presence of the king yeah God is good and his mercy endured forever I thank God I count this I take this not lightly I stand before you not as one being perfect, yeah? but God, but one God chose to use today yeah? to declare the word of the Lord. And can I encourage you as I encourage myself in the Lord? Yeah. And I will stick with the, the theme and the topic the pastor has given. The topic is the open door to spiritual growth. And if I would use for stop topic, it's simply come. Yeah? And that was what God is saying in this season, understand we are living in a season and a time that God said he's placing a greater demand on every true born again believer. God said, son of apply pressure to my people. Because some of us, pastor, if the truth were to be told, we've become lazy and we don't pray like we used to. We don't fast and seek the face of God 
Like so, so God said, son, I've applied pressure. He said, I've allowed some things to happen to get their attention. Uh -huh. Because God said, what's about to come and what's about to happen, not just in the earth realm, but in this nation of, of the Bahamas and in the city, God said, I need my people closer to me than ever before. Can I declare to you, this is not the season to take your relationship with God lightly. God is saying, come. And as I go, and the Lord says, I've allowed certain things to happen to get the attention, to get them in right alignment with me. God said, no longer in this season will we be able to make excuses for any assignment, for anything God said that he has given us to do. We're going to be held accountable if regardless of who we are, regardless of what our title is. It's God said, I'm oh, going to apply pressure. You know, when pressure is applied to something, yeah, yeah. it's like a squeezing. Yeah, but, so what you're feeling uh, is not the enemy. Uh, it's God that is me trying to get your attention, uh, to get you back uh, in position, not in the physical, but in the realm of the spirit. Because there's some things that have been slipping by some of us. Because we're out of position. And God said, I've opened the door. God said, the table has been spread. And God said, he's standing there waiting for us to come. The door is open. Now God says, come. God said, everything that we need in this season is through the open door. But you must understand who the door is. The door is Jesus Christ. And he's saying, come. He said, I need you, my people. I need you much closer than ever before. Pastor, for the past two days, yeah. I was sick. Nobody even know. I didn't even share with Nelly. It was a fight to declare this word. I'm like, God, what's going on? And God said, because this word, it speaks of relationship. It speaks of moving from the lazy, slumbering, sleeping state to now really seeking the face of God. And God said, son, I've hold some stuff up. I've blocked some stuff and tell my poor oh God. And tell my people begin to really, until they really begin to give me everything. God said some stuff hold up. Some prayers ain't answered yet because God said we refuse to come. And he says there's an open door to spiritual growth. Come on, let me move. You must understand in John chapter 10, the word of God declares, it says the thief cometh but not to steal, to kill but to destroy. And Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. It is not the will of God for us to be broken, just bust, gusted, and don't have nothing. But God said, I've given you a life but I need you to come listen God ain't just handing out no blessings in this season now you, listen you're gonna have to earn it you're gonna have to come before him now because God can't trust some of us with some things right now because if the truth were to be told pastor if someone walks through that door right now and write a check for each one of us for a million dollars things will change some of us, Pastor, you wouldn't ever see them again. Huh? So God said, I've got to bring you to a place now of maturity that I can trust you with some things. But we refuse to come. Understand, even though God has opened the door, there's some other doors that are open that we must guard against. The enemy also has some doors open. And he makes the doors very attractive. It may seem like a good business deal. It may seem like a good idea. But all the time, it's the trap of the enemy. And that's why now we've got to guard our spirits. We've got to guard the gates and the windows to our lives. Because the enemy, he knows that his time is short. And he's trying to throw us off of course. Come on, can I declare this? In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, the word of God declares, it says that we must be careful. Some translation says, anxious for nothing. It says, but everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be known, made known unto God. Listen, every move we make now, especially when we're leaving the island, God, is this your will for me to go? Because the enemy can have a true oh God. I don't care if you already buy the ticket. We've got to know that this is what God is saying now. Because many people are moving and not hearing the voice of God. And that's the last time you ever hear from them. So God says, now, I need you now to know my voice. Because there are many voices speaking. But every voice that is declaring is not the voice of God. Yeah, you got some people that wear suits. My God, they know scripture. But they are not of God. 
And so God now, God said, I need my people close yeah. to me than ever before. Because you've got to know my voice when I speak. Understand having the gift of discerning of spirits, or the gift of discernment, is imperative in this season. Especially as a true born again believer of Jesus Christ. You've got to know. You've got to know the evil from the good. You've got to know. Because everybody's saying God say. But God ain't always speaking. Oh God. Because you've got to understand the spirit. The last part of the first thing Jesus told his disciples. He says, take heed that no man deceives. He said, for many shall come. And when he's saying that I am the Christ and shall deceive many. But if you have a true relationship with God and you're close to him, you're going to recognize the enemy when he comes. Come on, let me move. In John chapter 10, verse 1 to 5, verse 7 to 9, you're up to third turn there. That's not my base scripture. Jesus Christ, firstly, he explains, firstly, there is only one way to God and that is through him. Because there are people now that are declaring there are more than one way to God. Secondly, Jesus Christ explains us the importance of knowing his voice. Thirdly, he declares emphatically that he is the door. In verses 1 and 2 of John 10, the Bible says, it says Verily, very or firmly, surely I say unto you, it says, He that entered not by the door, Jesus Christ, into the sheepfold, but climbed it up some other way, it says, the same as a thief and a robber. It says, But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. You must understand the true shepherd being the door, but only allowing those that belong to him. See, this is the season of relationship. Huh? Oh, God. See, oh God. See, some people are religious but have no relationship. Oh, good God from Zion. But God says, now he's, all God is simply saying, come man. I want to show you what I'm doing. I want to declare to you, oh God. He said, I want to answer the prayers. Oh God, I want to do some things, but you are too far away from me. So God said, I can't trust you with the thing that you're asking me for. Oh God. Come on, let me move. In John 10, verse 3 and 5, it says, To him the porter or the doorkeeper of the water open it, and the sheep hear his voice. And it says, And he called it his own sheep by name and leaded them out. It says, And when he put it forth his own sheep, he go before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. It says, And a stranger. Oh, good God. Will they, oh, God, a stranger, will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Can I declare to you, plenty strangers are speaking. Plenty strangers are declaring, thus said the Lord, but it's not God. So now the reason why we've got to come even closer to God and have a real relationship, because strangers are speaking. But we're missing it. Come on. Let me go on in verse 7 9. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, or firmly, or surely, I say unto you, He says, I am the door of the sheep. It says, And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. It says, But the sheep did not hear them. He says, I am the door. He says, By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And even as I get into the main text of Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 3, you could turn there if you wanted, or it may be on the screen. Verse 1 to 3, Isaiah 55. The word of God declares, it says, oh, everyone that is thirsty. God is saying, come to the waters. God says, everyone that has a true longing and passion for me. He said, everyone that has a true, God says, come. Because see, everyone is not desiring and going after God in this season. But going after everything, oh, God else but God. That's why God can't trust some of us. Because we're not coming to him. But he says, oh, everyone that is thirsty, come to the waters. But you must understand when you're thirsty, there's some things that happens in the physical body. There's some things that begin to happen. But one of the main things that happen is there's a lack. Or there's a longing for anything liquid or that is what. And God is saying, God is saying, is anyone just, does anybody just want me? We ask God for everything else, but God said, if you got me, I could release the stuff to you that you asked me for. God said, I have no problem answering your prayer, but do you want me or do you want the stuff? Because he said, I am the door. Everything happens through God. 
oh good God from Zion you know why people ain't really shouting on this word pastor because this word calls for work this oh good God this word calls for getting down deep in the dirt and saying okay God God said God said I want to bless you but I need you down here but nobody wants to get here see we expect to stand here but God said I need you down here in order for me to bless you but nobody wants to get to that place and so sad and so sad in the season so many people if they're not careful will be this yeah they'll be deceived because no real relationship not a curly head slick talking slang coming people give them their house papers their car no background check because they don't know the voice of God. All they hear, oh, he prophesied. She prophesied. See, and that's why it's important in this season to have a real relationship with God. Come on, let me move. He says, come to the waters. And God could have used any element, but he chose water. You know why? Because water is essential for human life and for the physical and natural realm. Water comes for 50 to the 60% of our body weight. One can only go without water. It's been proven for three days. And God says, come to the waters. That's all God is saying in the season. Come. I need you closer. God said, I want to speak to you the mysteries of the kingdom. And God said, I want to answer some questions yeah, that you've been asking me, but God said, you're too far from me. Yeah, can't I? And God is speaking, but we can't hear. Oh God, because we're tuned into different frequency, but he is speaking to us. Some stuff we're going through, or some stuff we have been through. If we have heard, oh God, if we had listened to the voice of God, there's some things we wouldn't be in right now. Oh God, have mercy. If we would tell the truth. Yeah. Come on, let's move. He says, come to the waters. Waters usually represents life. Water also is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Jesus himself spoke in John chapter 7 verse 37. He speaks prophetically. And he says, in the last day, in that great day of the feast, he stood and cried and saying, if any man thirst, let him come after me and drink. He didn't say go after things. He said, come after me. But no one is going after God. Like we should in Romans chapter 8 verse 5. The Bible says, it says, for they that are after the flesh, it says, do mind or show interest in the things of the flesh. It says, but they that are after the spirit, the things, oh God. So my question is, who and what are we going after in this season as people of God? Is it God or is it things? Yeah, my man, God is saying to come. Listen, every day. I've got to get up. If nobody else is up in the house, I've got to. I've got to be up seeking the face of God. I've got to be up working on my own soul salvation. I've got to be up working on me because I understand the closer I am to God, the stronger I am for when the storm comes because the storm is coming. Oh God. Let's move in John 4, 17. Or John chapter 4, verse 7. We know it well. The woman of Samaria came to the well. Jesus said, give me a drink of water. The woman's first response was, you Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And, but before that, Jesus said, come, let me give you a drink of this living water. She's like, okay. But he said, the well is deep. You have nothing to draw with. And what is the living water that you're speaking about? And Jesus says, listen, this water that I'm... I want to release to you is, a, oh God, a well of living water. Oh God, is, oh God, that will fill you. And Jesus was talking about himself. But she missed it. Come on, let's move. Another part of verse 1, he says, and he that had no money. He says, come buy wine and eat. He says, yea, come buy wine and milk. Wine and milk is symbolic of spiritual blessings. He says, without money and without a price, God said, son, what I want to release in this season upon my people. Oh, God, I don't care how much when you got in the bike, you can't buy it. Oh, God, the anointing and the power that God wants to release now is going to take availability. See, but we don't want to get there. We don't want to get to the place. We want God to use us. We want a fresh outpouring of his power. Oh God, we want to raise the, yes, we want to heal the sick, but we don't want to get here. And God said, this is the place where I need you. If you want more of me, if you want more of my power, if you want more of my not, God said, I need you here. That's why he's saying, come. 
He said the door is open. But how is it Jesus has opened the door? He's telling us, come. But we're going the other way. We're talking, he says, open door for spiritual growth. Some of us ain't growing because we ain't seeking God. And that's not the pastor. The pastor leaders preaching every Sunday sound doctrine. But until you decide to build a relationship with God for yourself, for yourself, pastor can preach till Jesus come, but until you say, okay, God, me and you. Hey, hey, because you got to understand when we stand before God, which every one of us, when you can't say the word of God was not declared in this house, you got to oh, you got to give it a count. All of us, including me. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Let's go to verse 2 Isaiah 55. Same, it says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? All of us. But most of us grew up with fresh bread being baked in our homes. Bread, bread is a foundational food. If you didn't have nothing else, bread was there. And it's amazing that Jesus, it's amazing that the prophet Isaiah used bread. You know why? Because bread symbolizes a gift from God in Exodus 16. Bread symbolizes the body of Christ in Mark 14. Bread also is referred to as the word of God in Matthew 6. Jesus Christ is called the bread of life. He said, why are you spending something for money for something that's not bread? We spend money on things that we don't even need. Oh, God have mercy. And God said, this is why I can't release some stuff to you yet, even though I want to give it to you. But God said, until I get you, Baba, I can't release what you asked me for. Come on, let's go on. He says, and your labor for that which satisfied not your hard-earned money. For something, oh God, that can't even, or if it does bring satisfaction, it's not, oh God, it's only temporary. God says, now, God, mm, God said, listen, spend your labor. Labor, God, he says, in me. He says, spend more time in my presence. He said, come. Every question that you want me to answer, God said, I got you. God said, every prayer, everything that you need, God said, I got you, but I need you closer to me. You gotta hear me that's all god is saying because so i'm gonna continue to reiterate but you must understand there's a place in all of us that's reserved for god no matter how we try to put people there things there degrees jobs god said that place in you that's reserved for me and that's why you're feeling this pulling all the time what is no that's god trying to draw you to him but we're running and god says come God said, let me heal those areas that you don't talk about. God said, let me touch that. God said, let me touch that area. The thing that happened to you that you don't talk about. Oh, that you don't talk about. Some of us carrying some scars. Something. So people did some things to some of us that we never talk about. So now we got some trust issues. And God said, I need you to come because I order you to move forward. Yeah, you save and you love Jesus. But you still got that scar right there. And God said, I want to heal and bring deliverance to it. So you can, oh God, so I can truly use you. Oh God, let me move. He says, hearken. He says, hearken diligently unto me. He says, and eat that which is good. But Lord said, the table has been spread. But he says, some of us have been eating from the wrong table. We've been allowing anything in our spirits and our hearts. So now we've become, oh God, intoxicated with everything else except God. So now when the word is being declared, some of us are mad. Because now truth being spoken. But because we're so filled up with lies and the lies of the enemy, we can't even accept truth when it's being spoken. God said, eat that which is good. He said, eat that which is good. My question now is, how's your spiritual diet? Yeah. We know the importance of a physical diet. Having the right nutrients, eating the right food, having the right supplements. But how is our spiritual diet? Are we building ourselves up in our most holy faith like the word of God declares? The Bible says bodily exercise profit a little, but God says now, how is your spiritual diet? Are you truly building yourself up in me? So when the enemy comes, you're able to fight. But some of us, oh God, our spiritual diet is non and void. Oh God, you all ain't saying nothing in here. Jesus. He says, and let your soul live and delight itself in fatness. 
God says time to live. Some of us are dying spiritually because we refuse to come. Some of us have a relational worship with God because we refuse to come. We've allowed people to close our mouth in the spirit. Oh God. Can I declare this is not the season that anyone close your mouth? Speak in order, yes. But declare what does say the Lord. I can tell you now, faces don't even move me. Because God doesn't show me what you think in a long time anyway. Shake out man, shake it by. This is not the season to listen to mind people. Because sometimes it does get to you the things that you see in the spirit. Sometimes what you hear on the record, it does hurt. But at the end of the day, it's about God and not about Nikki. Come on, let me move. Verse 3. I'm just about done. Verse 3. He says, inclined your ears. Notice, he keeps saying, and come unto me. He says, incline your ears and come unto me. He says, and your soul shall live. See, notice, that's all God keeps saying, come. That's all God saying, come. God said, the door's open, now come. Mm. God said, I have no problem, bless you with the next company. God said, I have no problem, oh God, God said, I have no problem, give you the next big contract. But he says, I need you closer to me. Oh, Jesus. Let me go on. He says, and I will make an everlasting forever, always ending covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David, God said, just as I swore and promised David. In Psalms 89, 2 and 4, he's the keeper of his word. God is a God of covenant. In Psalms 89, 34, he says, my covenant but I not break, not change the thing that has gone out of my mouth. Whatever God has spoken to you and promised you, God says, I will bring it to pass. But God said, I need to know that I can trust you you with the thing that I want to release to you. That's key right there. Note there's some doors that we have to close in this season. There's some doors or some, mm, some people we've got open we've got to close. You wonder why your prayer ain't been answered? Because of your connection. Huh? Because some people you got in your circle, they are not really for you. But because we have no relationship with God, uh, God been speaking, but we ain't listening. God said, you need to get them out of your circle. Even Judas, uh, even though he was there for a purpose, he had to be excommunicated out. Secondly, God has some doors closed until we seek him. In Matthew 6, 33, he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know what that kingdom of God means? The rule, the reign, the dominance. God says, seek my total control in your life. He says, and my righteousness. And God said, everything you need, God said, I got it. But we don't want to come. We, hey, we don't want to come. We want pastor and the leaders come preach every Sunday. But we don't want to put in the work. We got to work this word. This word, we got to work this. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. Works without faith is dead. Being alone. We got to work this word. We want more of God. And many of us, if not all of us, want to be used mightily by God. But it's going to take us to come to him. Because you, oh God. Because any of you intercessor or any of those who have rest can see in the spirit. Eh? There's a persecution that is coming to the nation of the Bahamas like never before. We think other nations suffering. Nations like China, North Korea, India. Christians have been killed for their faith. But listen, just to say, I say. But be so comfortable. But our turn is coming. So what are you going to do when they say, are you a Christian? And they got the country. Are you going to deny him? True relationship. Oh, good God from Zion. A true relationship with God, you will not deny him. But persecution is coming to this nation. They're going to begin to persecute Christians, whether you believe it or not. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Let me move. In my closing, he said there are four necessary components to spiritual growth. Firstly, God said we must make an effort to walk through the door because it has been open. In James chapter 2, 7, it says, even so, faith without works is dead being alone. Secondly, we must change our spiritual diet and be careful of what we watch, what we listen to, because it can hinder us from going through the door. Thirdly, we must know the voice of God when he's speaking. Fourthly, 
We must have a hunger and thirst after God like never before. That's going to keep you going after God and not things. Pastor, there are some things that the Lord said would happen in this year, 2023. And can I share them, sir? In my closing, one of the first things the Lord said would happen, I've already began to see some of them happen. I'm done, y'all. The Lord said there would be a massive changing of the guards all over the world. He says, we're going to see it. Many world leaders, governments, pastors, God says, I'm calling them to the final resting place. They're going to see there's a shift. Oh, bye. Yeah. He says, there's a shift that's taking place. Some of them, God is calling to their reward. Some of them is judgment. Second thing the Lord said, the Lord said, the enemies that have been troubling some of us for a very long time, God says, I'm moving them off the face of the earth. See, y'all didn't believe that. Some people trouble you just for being saved. Some people praying against you, going to the old man, they're doing all manner of it. Mind you, but you don't do them nothing. But because you serve and love God, so I'm moving them off the earth. You've been like, ain't God is a God of mercy? You might say, why? There's some people that will fight you till the day you die. There's some known enemies and some unknown enemies fighting us that we don't even know. God says, I'm moving them off the face of the earth. Oh, God. I tell you what the Lord say. Thirdly, Jesus have mercy. The Lord said, he says, there's a purging that's taking place in the body of Christ by his hand. God is cleaning his house because he's getting ready to come. He's going to purge. God said, I'm going to purge the house. God said, me, I God, I'm going to do it. Fourthly, God said, exposure is coming to the body of Christ, to world leaders and governments. But he says there's two types of exposure that's coming. The first one is God said, all those that have been in the back, that you think you know God in. God said, I'm going to, oh God, I'm going to begin to raise them up. Yeah. And you think you see preaching and teaching and singing and, and playing. God said, when I raise them up and they see God said, I'm bringing them to the forefront. Uh, because they've been through the wilderness experience. Uh, they've been before the face of God when we didn't even know. The second exposure God said he's doing. God said, all those leaders in the body of Christ. Those having positions and titles. World leaders and governments. Some of them covenant with Satan. They've joined secret orders. They've become a part of a cult. And yet, Kutuman, she got them about to expose and lift the cover off of them. I know this blown past some of your head, but I tell you what the Lord say, and you're going to see it happen. You are going to see it happen. God says, I'm pulling the cover. Not everyone that has some man, she can here. There's some leaders even... Lastly, Lord said there's a shift of wealth, a wealth transfer that's coming to the body of Christ. He said it's coming to those that have been faithful. He said it's coming, you could stand with me in my closing. Father, I give you praise. I've obeyed that which you've told me, God, to say and to do. Father, do you be the glory, the honor, and the praise. Every spirit of backlash and retaliation. Look at the man seeking. Every word curse I send you back. At the man seeking. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I thank you. That the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. And I thank you, oh God, that this word will not fall on dry ground. But it shall go forth and give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ and we give you all the glory, the honor and the praise in Jesus name. Somebody say amen.